it's Jen. I hope everyone had a nice holiday weekend. Uh, I definitely did. There was lots of cooking, lots of company. Um, overall, it was a good weekend, so hopefully everyone else had a great weekend too. Let's see if I can get this pile of books up. Da -da -da -da. So, that's what we're talking about today. As you can see, a lot of them are older books, uh, which is mostly what I collect. So, First one is Shark Lady, uh, The True Adventures of Eugenie Clark by Anne McGovern. I read this one obsessively as a child. I loved it. I'm hoping that I will still love it, and I can't wait to share it with my daughter. Uh, she's about the age I was when I discovered this book, and so I'm really hoping that it means, to mu ah, means as much to her as it meant to me. Um, the next one is Larry of Snowy Ridge by Margaret Johnson. This was another one I had as a kid. I have another version of this one. Uh, but it's the wrong uh, cover. It's not the same cover I had as a kid. And this one's the right cover. I finally found the right cover at our local used bookstore and I was super excited about it. I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy this book as much as I did when I was a kid. Uh, it's about a dog who I believe, it's a Great Pyrenees, and I believe it's like a search and rescue or bomb sniffing dog, something along those lines, during World War II. I think that that's the premise of this, but again, that's based on my 11-year-old me's memory of this. It's been a while. Uh, this one is from the library sale book cart. I love the vintage movie release editions of books. So this is Chitty Chitty Bang Bang by Ian Fleming, and this came out at the same time that they released the original movie with Dick Van Dyke. So, yeah, I couldn't help it. I have the old yeller version of this, you know, you know, the movie release version of old yeller. And whenever I see these, I just want to pick them up. I'm not going to read this copy because I think it will fall apart and crumble into dust if I do, but I had to have it for the shelf. This book I'm going to say it wrong, Ronia, The Robber's Daughter by Astrid Lindgren. This book, the children's book group that I'm on on Goodreads was reading this a couple months back and my library doesn't own it anymore and Baker and Taylor didn't have it for sale so we couldn't order it. So I saw this in the used bookstore and went, haha, I can read it. I'll be late, but you know, better late than never. And I'm guilty of having never read anything by Astrid Lindgren, even though she is a very popular children's book author. And I'm sorry, I know I'm butchering her name. It's just not my strong point. I'm sorry. The next one I picked up was The Railway Children by E. Nesbitt. Alright, so <laughs> funny story. When I was a kid, my mom remembered some kind of book featuring children and a train car. And she thought it was the boxcar children. So when I was a kid, she made me read the boxcar children. She's like, you're going to love this. You'll absolutely love this. I loved these when I was a kid. And I read them and I was like, oh, I hate these so much. And she finally read one and she's like, wait, that's not the one. And I'm betting that this is the one my mother was thinking of, the railway children, because Nesbitt write some really great juvenile fiction that really holds up. I mean, she was writing back in the 1800s, 1900s. However, her stuff reads really modern. If you've read The Five Children and It, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read The Five Children and It, go online and download a copy because it's, it's so old, it's out of copyright. Or just buy a copy, I guess, if you want to do it that way. But Five Children and It is great. It's almost timeless. And I'm hoping we're out the railway children is the same way. Even though railway is really hard to say. <laughs> this was one my kid picked up, Just Fishing with Grandma by Mercer Mayer. I cannot believe these books are still coming out. I loved these when I was a kid and my kid still likes them. Whenever we're at the bookstore, she picks at least one of these. So yet another one. I didn't ask her for her opinion on that one. She just read that one to herself. I haven't read it yet. I will get to it. This was off the library, the library free cart. I couldn't help it. I really couldn't. I haven't read this one yet. I've read several of this kind of style of book, though not by that author. So we'll see. It's probably going to be a while before I read it. 
I'm thinking that I'm bringing this on vacation with me in February. I'm going up north to Michigan to hopefully go do some skiing and other outdoorsy things. But in the evening, I'm going to need a book. And this will remind me of my early teens when I loved these things. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Let's see, what else? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kessy. This is one of those books I think that gets recommended. I don't know if I'm going to actually enjoy this or not. I'm actually thinking this will be a book for a spouse to read. I mean, maybe I'll read it too. If he reads it, I'll read it. That's, that's how this will work. Or if it pops up on another list for me to read, I'm going to read this one. But I wanted it available because spouse is trying to get into reading. And I think that that one's going to be his thing because he loved the movie. So we'll see. Summer by Edith Wharton. I know I've read something else by Edith Wharton, but I can't remember what the heck it was. And unfortunately, I think it was before I was logging on Goodreads. So until I stumble upon it by accident, I have no idea. But I know I've read something by her, so I saw this uh, for 50 cents. And I was like, you know what? Let's read another Edith Wharton. I think I've got a positive memory attached to her. We'll see. Um... Ready Player One. I've already read this, but Spouse is trying to start reading. We'll see how that goes. So this is his book. I would have held out for a hardcover, but he was excited about starting to read. It's kind of a new New Year's sort of thing. So we paid way too much for a brand new paperback, but that's, that's okay. That's all right. Okay, so this one was fun. This is a used bookstore book. Aesop's Illustrated Fables. Aesop's Illustrated Fables. No matter which way I say it, I'm corrected. I love the beautiful gold edges. The illustrations inside are not bad either. Let me try to get to a good representative page. Ah, la la. Of course, before when I opened it, all you found are illust- well, that one's kind of pretty. There's color illustrations in here as well. They switch back and forth a lot. I'm not sure why they're all a variety of styles, but I don't care. This looks a lot prettier than the paperback copy I had, so I will take it. It was too pretty to leave behind. All right, Jim Kelgard. I own a lot of his books because I read them when I was a kid. I never got to read this one. Our library never owned it. So, Two Dogs and a Horse. I don't know if I'm actually going to read it or if this one is just a um, display book. It might just be a display book. We'll see. It feels kind of... It's old. <laughs> How old is this, actually? I, should, I could let you know. 1964. And, I mean, it's not like a valuable edition. It's a book club edition. But still kind of feels like it'll crumble as I read it, so it might just be a decoration. Uh, Beowulf. Just a nice short little copy of Beowulf. Again, from the local bookstore. Alright, so I picked up the Ramona books. Ramona the Pest. Ramona the Brave. Ramona Forever. I know these are just like book club books. But I really liked the way the spines look. I really like this vintage look to them. So that's why I picked them up. However, I bought this one because I was pretty sure this was the first one that was from Ramona's point of view. And I wanted to read this one before I got into the other ones. But here's what's going to drive me crazy. This one never came out in this version. So now I don't know what to do. Because I love these versions. But that looks gross. So, yeah. I don't know what to do with that. I had something else I was going to tell you guys. I remember. Okay. So I'm going to be trying to come up with some New Year's sort of resolutions slash goals for this year. And one of the ones I am toying with, but I'm going to make my a separate video about this, is the idea of finishing reading the Newbery winners. Uh, the Newbery Award is in juvenile fiction. And there's been one awarded every year since 1922. So there's a bunch of them. Um, was that 97? 
96, something like that, a bunch of them. Uh, I've read around 30 of them, but I'm going to make a special video. I'm going to tell you how many I've read, what I have left, and then I think I will update monthly to let you know how I'm doing with my goal. My goal is to finish reading all of the Newberries in 2018. Just knock them out so that I can quit saying, oh, I meant to read that. I don't know. I meant to read that. And instead it can just be, oh yeah, I read that, you know? Uh, yeah, so that's everything for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.